Good evening, everybody. How you doing out there in Facebook land? It is your brother, your friend, your pastor, your teacher, your seminar host. Amen. It's the successful you hour on this Tuesday afternoon and I'll bring you greetings um, from here in the beautiful city of Arlington, wherever you are in this world, whether it's morning, evening, night, whatever, greetings from the kingdom of God. And thank you for joining us on tonight. And uh, and I uh, hope you had a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, go ahead and share, if you would, our page, like our page. What it okay, be? Hey, let the people know Pastor Stan is live. Success for you is on and live tonight. And uh, listen, we're excited as always. I know you hear me say that all the time, but I say it because it's true. And uh, excited about continuing this journey of being successful you and uh, enjoying this teaching. Thank those of you that are following us and I appreciate you following us and uh, let us know every once in a while that you're following us and uh, be so kind to send us a note, you know, and let us know how the, how the lesson has been a blessing to you. Listen, I thank those of you who do send me a note every once in a while. Let me know how the teaching has been a blessing to you and I appreciate that very much. And uh, if you join us for the first time, listen, want to welcome you to success for you. Well, this journey, we're learning how to live as you was created and not as you were born. We're discovering our original uniqueness as God created us, regardless of the circumstance and situation we were born into. And uh, it is possible that you be successful to you. And that's what this journey is all about. And listen, this is a journey. It's not a sprint. It's not a short distance. It's a journey. It's a long-term commitment to being successful who God created you. You've got to be committed to do it every day and every day of your life. So you can't put an expiration date on it. You can't put a timetable on it. You just got to enjoy the journey and work on it every day. And, uh, and so that's why we're here Monday through Thursday, right here posted. Unless something comes up, something happens sometimes, you know, the conflict is scheduled, the other things that come up that I have to take care of. But other than that, I'll be right here until my heavenly father tells me otherwise. And because this is my assignment at this point in my life. So again, thank you for joining us on tonight. And uh, get your Bible. Uh, we're going to look at some scriptures on tonight and we're going to get right in. So let's speak over our lives. Let's speak into our lives. Yes, it's time to do our successfully you confession and speak uh, prophetic into our lives the truth. Amen. Positive information based upon the truth concerning your life. So I'm going to share my screen here and uh, we're going to do our successfully you confession. And again, if you'd like to have a copy of this, please feel free to send us an email and uh, let us know. We'll be able to send that to you via email. And uh, so together, let's do our successful you confession. I am highly treasured and favored of God. I have a healthy respect for myself. I am a spirit being possessing a mind and living in a healthy human body. I am blessed with the seed of greatness and God's character and ability lives within me, causing me to excel in every area of my life. Through the power of love and forgiveness, I am freed from all emotional hurt, fantasies, fear, and strife, which will no longer rob me of my happiness and forward progress in life. Therefore, I take full responsibility for who I am and what I shall become. Upon the principles and wisdom of life will I delight and meditate day and night. My thought life is being renewed and my true purpose for living is being revealed. On this day and forevermore, I declare that, come on, say it with me. I am whole, I am fulfilled, I am happy. And finally, I am successful in me. Amen, you gotta be able to speak that and say that with confidence over yourself. And uh, while you on your way, you may be feeling everything that you're doing, but you got to learn to speak the word of God. You got to learn to speak the principles of God, positive truth over your life until you see the manifestation of the same. And, uh, and so that's what this is all about. So if you will, we are talking about a worry hearer. I'm not going to review. I'm not going to go back through all that because I seen to run out of time. And uh, so uh, you got to go back and listen to last night and, uh, and the previous ones and you better catch up and be able to uh, see where I'm starting at right now. We talk about there's four different types of hearers that Jesus identified 
among believers in the kingdom of God and people in general. But we're talking about people in the kingdom because in Jesus' parable, the significant thing in the parable in Matthew 13, it says, they each hear the word. The wayside hearer hears the word and receive it. Listen, the shallow hearer hears the word and receive it. The uh, worry hearer hears the word of God and receive it. And the healthy hearer hears the word of God and receive it. But only the healthy hearer bring forth fruit. Why? Because the other three excuse me, types of hearer, you're hearing the word of God, but you're not bearing fruit because you got too many things going on in your life. And we're talking about the third hearer. It's called the uh, um, um, the worry hearer. The thorns, the word, the word of God falls among the thorns in Matthew chapter 13, verse 22. It says, he hear the word, but because of the many cares he have that he carries around in his mind, in their mind, all these worries about all these things in life, those worries are choking the word of God in their lives. And because the word of God is choking, being choked in their lives, their, being, their ability to bring forth fruit is being choked. So we gave you seven, seven reasons, key reasons, why people worry and what makes you a worry hearer. I'm going to read all seven again, and, and we're going to talk about number seven because last night we talked about number seven, but I'm going to give you all seven again, but I'm not going to give them to you in detail. So write them down or go back and listen to last night teaching and the previous teaching, and you better get the details of that. So if you join us for the first time, I just want to review this part and give you these, the, the seven things, the seven key reasons why you worry. Number one, we discovered you worry because your mind is too busy with life distractions. You got too many life distractions. You got too many life distractions, which means you're caring too much about too many things. The issue is not caring. The issue is how you are caring. You're caring beyond your ability to care, which means then you are carrying the weight that you were designed to carry, which means also you're really trying to be God. That's why you're worried. You're trying to be God, see, of your life. Instead of working with him, you're trying to just be him without him, and you find yourself worried. Number two, you worry because you have a divided mentality. Another way of putting it, you have a double mind. You're double-mindedness. Having a divided mentality or being double-minded will cause you to be a worrier. And you know what the word says, a double-minded man. Let him think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. But he also, he's unstable in all of his ways. Can't depend upon him. You can't depend upon yourself when you're divided and double-minded. Number three, we discovered the third reason why you worry and have a word mentality is you have selfish ambitions for riches. Yeah, you have selfish ambitions for riches. There is such thing as a selfish ambition and a righteous ambition, okay? Now, here's what a selfish ambition is. A selfish ambition is when you want riches for their pleasure and for their privileges and not for the purpose for which God created riches. Let me say it again. Selfish ambition for riches is selfish because you want the riches for their pleasure and the privileges of having the riches and not for the purpose for which God created riches. Righteous ambitions is where you want riches for the purpose for which God created them. And in having them for the purpose, you also get to enjoy the privilege and the pleasures that comes along with it. The only difference is the selfish ambition have the privilege and pleasures up front. The righteous ambition have purpose up front, and because of purpose, they get to enjoy the privileges and the pleasures of riches. The Father is not against you having privileges and pleasure. He's against when you put ple uh, pleasure and privileges first. All right? So that's number three. The fourth reason 
that you worry and you have a worry mentality is you define your personal worth by your worldly possessions and wealth. Let me say it again. The fourth reason that you are worried, have a worried mentality is because you define your personal wealth by your personal uh, worldly possessions and wealth. See, you define your worth by your personal possessions and your personal wealth. And based upon your personal wealth and personal possession, you define whether or not you're important or not. And the scripture says, as we quoted many times, Jesus said a man's life, a man's worth and value does not consist in the things in which he possess. So you're going against the word of God when ascertaining your worth by using your possessions, your positions, places, people, or wealth. They do not determine your worth. The fifth reason we discovered or why you are worried and why you have a worry mentality is you seek the kingdom of God, but not first. And you only seek it for his promised power and possessions. Let me say it again. We're talking about people in the church, kingdom people, saved people. You worry because you seek the kingdom, but you don't seek it first. You seek it after you seek something else. And when you do seek the kingdom, you seek it because of what it promised to give you in terms of power and possessions. Which means if the kingdom was not promising you power and possession, you wouldn't seek it. That makes you for, have a worry mentality. That's why you're worried. Because you don't seek the kingdom first. You seek the kingdom second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever, but it's not first. And by being that way, you made yourself a worrier. You made yourself vulnerable to worrying. And that's why you have to worry because you know in your own heart that you're not seeking the kingdom first. Seeking the kingdom first has, is not about your words. It's about your actions. That's number five. Number six, the sixth, the sixth reason why you are a worry and a word mentality is your passion for riches and money is greater than your passion for the righteousness of God. And I'm gonna explain that. The reason you have a worry, a worry mentality and are a worry hearer is because number six, your passion for riches and money is greater than your passion for righteous, for the righteousness of God. Which means this, you value having money and money itself above the ability and the standards and the principles of producing money and making money. See, when you understand the principles of finance, you don't have to pursue finance because the principles of money will produce money. But you don't value principles. You don't value the process. You value money above the principle and above the process. And so therefore, you seek riches of the kingdom. You don't seek the kingdom. That's why it's dangerous to teach people kingdom principles without teaching them to value the kingdom itself. See, everybody want to learn kingdom principles, but they don't want to love the kingdom. I'm going to say it again. You need to write that down. Everybody wants to learn the kingdom principles, but not many want to love the kingdom. See, you got to have a love for the kingdom first. Because if you learn the kingdom principles, the kingdom laws, without developing love for the kingdom, all you do is turn yourself into a pimp, prostitute, a shyster, a thief, a con man, crafty, uh, uh, whatever, whatever word you can think of. And yes, that's going on in the church, in the body of Christ. Because people are using the kingdom to build their own kingdom. See? Because you understand that the principles of the kingdom of God of not no respect to person. So they'll work for anybody. But the danger is when you work the kingdom, the principle of the kingdom of God without a love for the kingdom, you will not become the king that God intends for you to be. You become a rogue king. Yeah. You become something else. 
other than like Christ. All right? So, and we left out with number seven. And that's what we're going to dive off into tonight. Number seven, the seventh reason why you worry and why you have a worry mentality and you're a worry hearer is because you have a perceived false security about riches and not about the word of the kingdom of God. Let me say it again. The seventh reason why you have a worry mentality and you're a worry hearer or why you worry is your perceived security in life is in the riches that you have and the wealth that you have financially and not the word of the kingdom of God, which means you don't derive your security in life from the word of God. You derive your security in life in your mind from the wealth and the riches you have in the world. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 18. We're going to look at several passages of scriptures here. Proverbs chapter 18, our first one, the book of wisdom. And let's change our perspective, our perception about riches and money. This is going to help you, explain to you why you worried about it, but at the same time, explain to you how to change your mentality. You, you got to understand this about finances, okay? Watch this. Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 11. It says, and I'm reading into uh, uh, the Amplified Bible. It says, the rich man's wealth is his strong city. Watch this now. And as a high protecting wall in his own imagination and conceit, Mm. A rich man's wealth is a strong city and has a high protecting wall in his own imagination and conceit. See, in his own mind, he thinks he's secure by his riches. He thinks riches give him security. And they don't. I don't care how much money you have, you're not secure because of money that you have and watch this and you shouldn't feel insecure when you don't have any oh yeah i'm gonna help you tonight see watch this uh uh look at uh um uh, uh let's see here proverbs chapter 11 see it says the rich man gets a false sense of security from his riches and you got a lot of believers like that Proverbs chapter 11. We're going to connect another verse to this. Chapter 11, verse number um, 28. Watch this. Proverbs 11, verse number 28. Says, he who leans on, trusts in, and is confident in his riches shall fall. But the uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like a green bow tree. Wow. Read it again. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28. He who leans on, trusts in, and is confident in his riches shall fall. Shall fall. Wow. Wow. But the uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like a green bow tree. You trust in your riches. Listen, that's a guaranteed fall. That's guaranteed failure. Here's why. Why is it? Why is it that we shouldn't trust in riches? See, those of you that worry about it, you worried about it because you, you're leaning on it, you trust in it. And you think as long as it's there, you're secure. But I got news for you. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. Here's why you should not lean on, trust in, have confidence in your riches. 
And for those of you who get this sense of confidence and security because you have money, that's false confidence and that's false security. Because what happens when the money goes away and you still here? All right, what happens? It reveals what you have not learned. Watch this, Proverbs chapter 23, verse five. Here's why you should not lean on and trust in your riches. But you should lean on and trust in the righteousness of God. So stop trusting the riches and start trusting the righteousness. Because watch this. Your riches came by righteousness. But righteousness can produce riches. Let me say it again. Your riches cannot buy righteousness. But your righteousness in Christ can produce riches. So which is more secure? Righteousness is more secure. And righteousness simply is God's way of doing things, God's standard for living, how he does things, and how he lives. Trust righteousness. Trust the standard of God. Do it God's way. And what happens? You will get the riches. Look at Proverbs 23, verse 5. Let's read it. It says, will you set your eyes upon wealth when suddenly it is gone? For riches, I didn't write it, I'm reading it, and I'm believing it. For riches certainly make themselves wings like an eagle that flies toward the heavens. He said, the reason you don't trust in riches is because they will leave you. You know why? What's one of the one of the practical everyday economical terms we use for money, for riches? One of the, you know, and there's many out there, but think about this. One of the things that money is called is called currency. Every Society, every nation, every country has its own currency. Why is it called currency? Think about it. Currency. Is here the moment, current, but then you see it go away. Currency. Watch this. Currency means Flow. Money is made to flow, to move. It's not made to stay, to circulate currency. He said money will take wings and fly away. That's why you're not supposed to hold on to it. Let your money fly. That's why, you, that's why it's more blessed to give than to receive. Why? Because when you let your money fly, it goes and brings more back. But when you try to hold on to it, it's going to leave anyway. But watch this, but it's not going to bring anything back because you didn't release it. It escaped you. You wasted it. You plundered it. See? Think about it. Money is called currency. It's designed to flow. Stop being stingy. It's making you worry. It's giving you a worry mentality, making you a worry hearer. And when you're a worry hearer, the word of God does not work in your life. And when the word of God does not work in your life, then your life will not see the manifested fruits of the word of God in your life. So when the word is choked, then your growth is choked. Your development is choked. Your fruitfulness is choked. When the word of God is choked in your life. When the word of God is no longer choked by your worries, then your life is no longer choked by your worries. Think about it. When you choke something, you restrict the passageway. See, you make it tighter than it's supposed to be. So worry restricts your life. It restricts the word of God in your life. And it restricts your life from bearing fruit. Stop choking yourself. Stop choking your life with worry. And read the word and believe the word. It says, 
Again, will you set your eyes upon the wealth when suddenly it is gone? For riches certainly make themselves wings like an eagle that flies toward the heaven. It says riches will make itself wings because in riches, the inherent nature of riches is to fly, to move, to, to circulate. Yes, it's okay to save. But even what you save is going to be spent by somebody at some point. See? Don't save just to be saving. Now you're hoarding. So you should save so you can spend later. See, there's, there's, there's money that you spend now, and there's money that you spend later. But the bottom line is, is all is designed to be spent. Spent wisely. Managed wisely. See? And that's why a lot of you worry because you don't manage wisely. And you never have enough. You're always running out. So you create your own worry. Okay? I got another one for you. I got another one for you. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter um, 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 27. Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27, verse number uh, 24. Watch this. Proverbs 27, verse 24. For riches are not forever. Does a crown endure to all generation? Mm, 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 mm. Riches are not forever. They temporary. That's why you've got to continue to sow so you can continue to reap and have more to continue to come in. Riches are not forever. That's the word. When you understand that and you learn to develop your mentality based upon the principles and the truth of the word of God, that riches are not forever. Which means also riches cannot guarantee you security. There's no security in riches, in money. But as we've learned that money is God's number one challenger, God's number one competition in the life of people. And you can change that. Yeah, it used to be in my life as well. God's greatest challenge in my life was money, but no longer. I changed that. Money is no longer God's challenge in my life. God has no competition now in my life. Uh-huh, yeah, think about it. So you can train yourself. You can train yourself in a way to where God don't have to compete with money in your life. You have to train yourself. It's not because you get older. You can be a young fool or old fool. You can be a young warrior or old warrior. Your age has nothing to do with you getting better. Your age only means you have multiple opportunities to get better. So if you're 65, that means you've had 65 years to get better. You're 45, 45 years to get better. Whatever your age is, that's how much time you've had to improve and get better. And you should do that every day. So every year, you get better. So, but you got to train yourself, teach yourself not to worry. See, how do I, how do I teach myself and train myself not to worry? Look at Proverbs 16. You got to start believing the word of God when it comes to money. Money is temporary. Don't last forever. Money will make rings and fly away. And money provides no security. No security at all, because that's not his purpose, and I supposed to. See, stop leaning on it, stop trusting in it, let it go. Proverbs sixteen. Here's another powerful. Proverbs sixteen, verse number um, sixteen. Look at it. Here's what the attitude you got to get about money. You got to value something more than money. If money is the most valuable thing in your life, that's why you worry. I'm gonna say it again. If money is the most valuable possession in your life, 
something wrong with that picture. I'm gonna show you something in the word that's more valuable than money. But unfortunately, most people don't value it. But in the kingdom of God, this is more valuable than money. What is it? Look at verse number 16 in Proverbs 16. It says, how much better is it to get skillful and godly wisdom than gold? And to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. Wow. Did you not know that wisdom, the wealth of wisdom, is of greater value than gold? Yes. Understanding has more worth than silver. Here's why I don't worry about money. Because I now pursue the wisdom of God with a passion. Because I've learned through the word that it's more valuable than money. Here's why, y'all. Money cannot buy wisdom and produce wisdom. But watch this. Wisdom can make money, though. Money doesn't make you wise. But wisdom does and will make you rich. Let me say it again. Money can never and will never make you wise. But wisdom can and will make you rich. That's why wisdom is of greater value than riches. Because riches come from wisdom. Wisdom don't come from riches. So to worry about riches is to lack wisdom. So you lack wisdom. That's your eighth reason. That's, that's reason number eight or why you're a worrier. You lack wisdom about money. And you lack a love for wisdom. That's why you have a worry mentality and you're a worry hearer. But the word of God will change that. So let me help you change that. So let's read this again. How much better is it to get skillful and godly wisdom than gold. In other words, it is better to get wisdom than to get gold. Second part of the verse, and to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. If you had a choice to choose silver, riches, and wisdom, which one do you choose? I would choose wisdom because wisdom will produce riches. But riches won't necessarily produce wisdom. And as long as you got the wisdom of God, you always have the skills and the strategy to produce wisdom, riches. Wow. Did you not know that you're going to be rich and still be a fool? Yeah, there are some rich fools, but there's also some rich, wise people. And I've decided I'm going to be a rich, wise man. Wisdom does not accept poverty and being broke. There ain't no way that you can be wise in your living and be broke. Now, you can have the wisdom of God in you, but not know what to do with it. It can cause you to be broke. But if you operate in the wisdom of God, there's no way for you to be broke. And that's what I said. If you're operating in the wisdom, not just having it, but operating in it. Because the Bible does talk about a poor, wise man. How can you be poor and be wise? You find in the book of Ecclesiastes, go look it up. The poor, wise man. I'm going to see if I can, I, I'm not going to read it. But just since I brought it up, I want to see if you can, uh, uh, if I can find it for you. And then you go, you go, yeah, there it is. There it is. The poor wise man is in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 15. See, he could save the city, but he couldn't keep himself out of debt. He couldn't save himself. Why? Because he did not know how to apply wisdom to himself. And watch this, y'all. Why is it that a poor wise man, 
He didn't value himself. See, he didn't use it for himself. It's not enough to have wisdom. You got to use it. So go read that. He could save the city, but he couldn't save his own household. That was, listen, that's like the preacher that can preach to you, but can't live it. Which means he got the intelligence. Oh, there's a whole lot of people out there. You wise, but you poor. That means you can teach others, but you don't live it yourself. That's also called hypocritical. You're going to be broke because you're living a lie. See, you learning so you can tell other folks, but you're not learning so you can live yourself. See, I don't learn to teach. I learn to live. Let me say it again. I don't learn the truth so I can teach it. I learn the truth so I can live it. And as long as I'm living the truth, I'll always be able to teach the truth. Think about that. If you're learning the truth just to teach people, you won't always have a place to teach. Because at some point, you don't live it, people are gonna stop fooling with you. But if you learn to live, you'll always have something to teach other people. So watch this. Wisdom is of greater value than riches. Look at Proverbs chapter eight. Proverbs chapter eight. Proverbs chapter eight, watch this. Look what wisdom says in Proverbs chapter eight. Very powerful, very powerful, very powerful, very powerful. It says, verse number 10, it says, receive my instruction in preference to striving for silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. Oh my God. So he's telling you how to change your mentality. I'm trying to help you to change your mentality. You got to start pursuing wisdom and knowledge and understanding like your life depends upon it. And then you will come into riches that you need. You got to flip the script on yourself. Look at verse number 11. For skillful and godly wisdom is better than rubies or pearls. And all the things that you may desire are not to be compared to it. Mm. The greatest asset that you and I can attain in this life is the wisdom of God. It's a wise man that gets saved. Do you not know? See, you got saved because you wised up. Wisdom said, listen, you find me, you, you'll get riches. Yes, wisdom will reward you with riches. So pursue wisdom, don't pursue riches. Because pursuing riches causes you to worry. But when you start pursuing wisdom, you're no longer worry. You got to teach yourself this. Look at the same chapter, go down to verse number um, um, 17. It says, this wisdom talking now. Wisdom says, I love those who love me and those who seek me early and diligently shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Enduring wealth and righteousness, uprightness in every area and relation and right standing with God. Wow. My fruit is better than gold. Yes, than refined gold and my increase than choice silver. Wow. Skip on down to verse 121. That I may cause those who love me to inherit true riches and that I may fill their treasures, their bank account. My God. Wisdom said, listen, if you pursue me, if you come after me, I will reward you with riches and honor and long life. See, that's why I know my life going to end well and I'm, I'm going to be successful at greater levels is because every day, more and more, I'm pursuing riches. I mean, wisdom. I'm pursuing the wisdom of God and not the riches of this world. And because I'm pursuing the wisdom of God, 
I shall possess the wealth and the riches of this world so that I may fulfill my kingdom purpose and assignment. Oh my God. You see, you got to get this. How do I change my mentality from that of a warrior? How do I change my, my hearing from that of a warrior to one that can hear God? You've got to begin to rethink what you believe about riches. And then you got to learn the value of the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, and the understanding of God, because those are true wealth and riches. And when you get that true wealth called wisdom, knowledge and understanding, you're on the path to having, listen, riches, physical money and wealth, but in righteousness. Because wisdom of God don't always lead you on a righteous path and never to pursue riches. Wisdom will never lead you to pursue riches, only itself. Look what it said. I love those who love me and those who seek me early shall dil and diligently shall find me. Proverbs 8, 17 and 18. Look at verse 18. Riches and honor are with me. Yes, enduring wealth and righteousness. Wow. So you can be righteous and rich. See, all this, listen, I don't, all this about, I don't believe in the prosperity gospel, whatever. I don't care what you call it, whatever. You know, I, I, I don't call it prosperity gospel. But listen, there ain't no way you can do kingdom and not prosper. See, the gospel is not about finances and money. The gospel is about the kingdom. And you can't have the kingdom without wealth and riches. It goes with it. Think about it. You don't expect the earthly king to be broke. Why would you expect a spiritual king of God's kingdom to be broke? It's amazing how God's people have misrepresented the kingdom of God. And now we let the world tell us what we should have and what we shouldn't have. No, obey the word and not the world. The word says, the word of God says, just don't pursue riches first. Don't pursue them at all. Seek first the kingdom of God. Because our father knows all the things that we have need of. And I read it to you last night that it's the father's good pleasure, according, good, good pleasure rather, according to Luke chapter 12, verse 32. It's the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants you to have riches. He just don't want riches to have you. Because when riches have you, then that means God doesn't have you. He has to compete for place and space and importance in your life. And by because God has to compete in your life with money, you become a worrier. Whenever God no longer has to compete in your life with money, that means you become full of wisdom and no longer worry. See? So the fact that you worry means you lack wisdom. And the wisdom needs to be the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of men. See? The wisdom of men will always cause you to pursue things that's important to people, but that won't be important to God. And you'll lose yourself, you'll lose your way, and you find yourself worrying about everything. I'm learning not to worry. I'm learning not to worry. And listen, I'm out of time, but I'm not a word. But tomorrow, we're going to look at a verse of scripture that talked about how to learn not to worry. I'm going to show you, you can learn because worry is a learned behavior. God didn't make you a worrier. It's not a part of your DNA. It's become a part of your mentality because of your decisions you've made. So let me say it again. Worry is a learned behavior. It's time for you to learn to unworry, stop worrying, and learn to have a wise mentality, to be a wise hero and not a worry hero. Join me on tomorrow. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. I'm going to show you in the word of God. 
how to go from being a worry hearer to a wise hearer. And when you become a wise hearer, then your hearing will become healthy and you'll be on your way to being fruitful in every area of your life. I guarantee it, I promise it. If you believe it, if you trust, if you apply it, but you gotta work it, you gotta work it. The word works. And join me tomorrow, I'm gonna show you how to do that. How to go from a worry mentality to a wise mentality. And when you become wise, riches gonna find you and you ain't gonna have to seek them no more. God bless you, I appreciate you. Thank you for allowing me to come into your home. And I pray that the word of God has been a blessing to you as it has been to me, to teach and share with you in this nightly Successful Youth Seminar. Listen, think about it, meditate, go back and look at the scripture, study, read, get them in your heart, memorize them, learn them, and live them, and begin to apply your faith to the words that I gave you on tonight. And watch the word begin to take root in your life and allow the word to take root in your life. See, your circumstances has nothing to do with it. It's how you see your circumstances that has everything to do with it. Change how you see it. And tomorrow, I'm going to help you how to do that, teach you how to do that on tomorrow. If you join me in tomorrow, tell somebody about the Bible study, the seminar that we have every night, Monday to Thursday, Success for the Youth. God bless you. And listen, until we see each other tomorrow, live as you was created, now as you were born. It's time to know about your original uniqueness. Love you, appreciate you. I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow. God bless you. Y'all have a good night. Good night, Facebook people, wherever you are, all over the land. We love you in the kingdom.